Hi guys, this is my second video about the fantastic MakeHera Z1 or Z1 CNC machine. In the first video, I covered the machine specification, demonstrated thread milling, milled some aluminium, and also tested the laser. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link above. In this video, I'm going to test the rotary fourth axis. This is what you get in the kit. You get the fourth axis unit itself with a reversible four jaw chuck, a stepper motor, and a tailstock with a live center. The chuck jaws are reversible, just make sure you put them back in the correct order when you flip them around. You also get a couple of epoxy tooling blocks, which are excellent for machining. And finally, there's a hex key and the lever keys for tightening the jaws. To install the unit, we start by inserting two alignment pins into the table. Then we locate the fourth axis onto the pins and secure it to the table with three machine screws. Next we position the head unit and tighten it down with the hex key. Feed the cable through the machine and plug it into the socket at the back. Now we find the centre of the block and make a small hole. Place the block in the chuck and lightly tighten the jaws. Then we move the tailstock so the live centre point engages the hole. Secure the tailstock with the hex key and tighten the point against the block. And finally, use the two lever keys to tighten the jaws. Now we can power on the machine. Once the fourth axis has reached its home position, we can jog it to the orientation we want. We do that by running the software and logging into the machine. Then we jog the A axis to rotate the block. In this case, I'm turning it 45 degrees so the top of the block is horizontal. And finally, we click A equals zero to set the current position as the A axis work origin. I'm going to start with some rotary 3D carving. I've imported an STL model into MakeHera Cam, set the material size, and created two tool paths, a horizontal roughing pass using a 1 8 of an inch single flute end mill, and a vertical finishing pass using a 30 degree V-bit. Once those were ready, I exported the G-code. I'll add a link to a full tutorial on how to do this in the video. Now we can upload the G-code to the machine. First we set the X and Y offset. Then we turn on the vacuum, the aeroblast and the new automatic bed cleaning option. We've already got scan margin and auto Z probe enabled. So now we can click run. The machine first asks us to install the height probe. It measures the tool length offset using the tool setter then shows us where the toolpath will be located on the stock and finally probes the fourth axis. Now it asks us to install the 1 8 of an inch single flute end mill. It measures its height with the tool setter and then begins the roughing pass. For the finishing pass, the tool is changed to a 30 degree V-bit and I've also cut the right hand stock away. Here's the result. The epoxy block is really easy to mill and it holds detail well, so it's great for this kind of project. Next, I'm going to try indexed milling. That's where you rotate the material between operations so the machine can cut it from different sides. 
I've created a model of a Gridfinity Endmill holder in Fusion and exported the G-code. This time I'm using some scrap wood. The G-code is loaded into the machine and run in exactly the same way as before. The process starts by probing the fourth axis. Then we change to the 1 8 of an inch single flute end mill. First all four sides are machined to size with a facing toolpath. Then an adaptive toolpath removes the bulk of the material from the pockets. A contour toolpath is used to finish the sides of the pockets. Another adaptive toolpath removes the material from the body. A contour toolpath finishes the sides. Then another adaptive toolpath. and another contour tool path to finish the sides. Finally, we change to a 90 degree chamfer bit to chamfer the edges. It came off the machine looking pretty good. I cut the unwanted stock and sanded the sides flat. And this is the result. It's designed to hold four of the plastic end mill cases and it slots straight into a Gridfinity grid. It works well, I'm happy with that. And that wraps up my test of the Makera Z1 rotary fourth axis. We've done a rotary carving and some index milling. And honestly, the fourth axis is a lot of fun to use.